Hello, hello everybody. Here we are in Gettysburg on a windy and cold day. It's not windy because we're being blocked by a building, an especially cool building, but before we get to that, just note that here you have some railroad tracks. There were railroad tracks here in 1863. They didn't go much farther than that. These are the railroad tracks that went out to the first day's field, but they didn't lay the tracks for them yet, only the beds. So there were railroad cuts as they preferred, as they prepared for this railroad to go further, the Tape Room Railroad, all the way into the Appalachian Mountains. Okay, so we're a block north of the square now, and we're at a significant location here. I think you're already going to gather uh, where that is because here on November 18th, 1863, in the late afternoon, Abraham Lincoln arrived here on special train and got off right here. And to talk about where we are and who knows what else, my old friend, uh, Wayne Motts, president and CEO of the Gettysburg Foundation. Uh, Wayne, where are we? What do you got to say? Thanks, Gary. I appreciate it. On behalf of the Gettysburg Foundation, thank you and American Battlefield Trust for having us here. Of course, we're at the Lincoln, what we call the Lincoln Train Station, which was the railroad station, railroad service for Gettysburg in 1863. And most of the viewers may not know that the Gettysburg Foundation actually owns this building. And it's our intent to work on an augmented reality experience inside this building for spring of 2022 and we could Gary we could talk more about that at, at a later time so where Chris is pointing now this train station has been added on to let's circle around here and take a look at it and see the original portion of the train station is up toward the front along Carlisle Street now the railroad was opened up here in 1858 and the train station Italian 8 architecture was built in 1859 was opened up for passenger service in 1859 and in the addition that we have here on the back dating to the 1880s so when president lincoln came into the railroad station here and i'll just scoot over here gary's working the questions <laughs> uh, when, pre when the president came in here the platform was here the railroad train actually backed up right up against the railroad station and the original area that had happened is now inside the train station so the original portions on the front then the addition here on the 1880s uh, that's here and this is used as a passenger station here in Gettysburg until December 31st, 18 or 19, I'm always thinking 19th century, huh? 1942. 1942 is when this stopped being a passenger train station. We still get use of the of the tracks here uh, today. Gary. Oh, and of course, if we start shooting alive, along comes a piece of equipment. Uh, but we are standing along a train track, so let's get moving. So we're really excited that the uh, Gettysburg train station, the Lincoln train station, will be open to the public again starting, did you say, Wayne? Uh, it'll be in the spring. I can't tell you exactly what day it'll be, but we're working with the company to put a, a unique experience inside. Good, good. And when, when Wayne talks about unique experience, when we talk about virtual and augmented reality, just know that the trust has all sorts of those things. Um, you know, the we have our uh, Gettysburg AR experience, augmented reality experience, and I've been using it today. I listened to the Gettysburg Address spoken by an avatar of Lincoln on the spot where he actually gave it. So here we are at the train station. I mean, this is irrevocably tied with Abraham Lincoln. He arrived here, he departed from here, and this train station saw it all. I think Chris has already flashed up a, uh, an old picture of the train station here. Uh, because this is Gettysburg, you can see above the door here, um, July 1863, a Civil War building. And it's older than that, to be sure. Not sure if you've been in here before, but it's a good space. I think you'll get the vibe when you're able to go in. So we hope you'll come visit when it opens up back in the spring. Yeah, that's right, Gary. And so why don't we discuss quickly what we what the plans that we have for the building that's here. So there are three rooms inside the building, and the first plan that we're going to put together, everyone, will be a panel and sort of an interpretation of the train station. Then we're going to have the augmented reality experience. You'll put on a set of headsets, you'll go in, into the building, and you'll experience three characters that we're working on. One of those will be Basil Biggs. He's an African-American, of course, who helped bury the bodies. He would have been here at the train station picking up coffins. Second, we will have Cornelia Hancock. Cornelia Hancock from New Jersey, a nurse at the time of the Civil War. Her letters exist. She's in and out of the train station. And we're also going to have a third character, which will be a soldier. So a soldier, a civilian, and a lady civilian are going to be the three characters. Our soldier will be Eli Blanchard. He was a musician in the 24th Michigan, the Iron Brigade. He worked in a building right next door, the Sheets and Beeler Warehouse. That stood Chris, and I'm sorry, we got to go into porta potties over here next door, Gary. <laughs> but the Sheets and Beeler building, which was a large warehouse, 
stood right here next to the train station so Eli Blanchard is going to be working in there and then he'll also be coming over here into the train station so it'll be these three characters and we know a lot about them and we're going to be giving the history of those three characters inside the building and of course the last gallery we're going to be talking about Abraham Lincoln as well as part of that. Well good good so Abraham Lincoln's going to end up spending 24 hours here 25 hours in Gettysburg of course we know for a fact that he stopped across the street over here at the Lincoln Diner as I think you well know just kidding um, uh, but we will say the diner wasn't here but wonderful cheesecake excellent omelets and I'm a vegan and I still know that those things are just great my wife worked there even for a short time so check that out and there's lots of good places to eat in Gettysburg check out Destination Gettysburg to learn a little bit more about some of the great coffee shops restaurants and more to do in Gettysburg Here's a picture of David Wills, so it's appropriate as we make this walk up to the David Wills house. We have a photograph of David Wills, class of 1851 at Gettysburg College. So David Wills is a graduate of Gettysburg College. He becomes a teacher for a short time in the state of Alabama. He comes back to Gettysburg where he becomes a very prominent attorney. And at the time of the Battle of Gettysburg, he is a 32-year-old lawyer and he will be chosen by our governor in Pennsylvania, Andrew Curtin, to be the agent that will establish the National Cemetery. So when Lincoln comes here, Lincoln's walking up this street to Gary and I are walking up to stay at the home of David Wills. And he is here at the invitation of David Wills, who looked a little bit older than this at the time. I think he was in his 30s. He's got his beard. He's got yeah. his big beard at the time. Yeah. Let me just this say is that- This him uh, as a younger man. What a great picture as a younger man. Yes, so, and I, I think yeah. this is Adams County. No, Gettysburg College owns Gettysburg this image, as I remember. Yeah, yeah. And there's another picture of him. There's two of him, kind of with his class. He looks like the big schmoozer um, among some of his class. I want to say, first of all, you're with the American Battlefield Trust. We hope you'll share this with your friends. We see a lot of you on here already. Uh, congrats to Wayne on his new position. Um, our good friend Uli Bauman is also watching from Mechanicsville, Beaver Dam Creek, uh, Ellison's Mill, if you all don't go down there. Some people are suggesting, what about some of the train workers in the museum? Something to consider. And was the train a hospital? You'll figure out all this um, after the museum is back open <laughs> and you'll be able to learn about it. That's that's me not putting us on the spot as to whether it was and a the hospital. the answer is thank you for the suggestions. And yes, it was the first field hospital in Gettysburg, according to the accounts we have, because when John Buford brought his troopers in here on June 30th, he had some that were sick and he had to find a location for them and where does he come he comes to the train station and he's assisted by a local civilian who actually puts beds right up in the train station that's great i'm really glad to have our good friend jim voss here on here for the second video in a row good to see you jim that's chris white behind the camera by the way and if, uh, if you think you can work and mess with people's titles and put up put up photos while you're walking on a cold windy day i'd like to see you try it because chris has uh, become be really white. good at this here <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're going by the Majestic Theater here, now owned by Gettysburg College. This is where the Gettysburg movie premiered, at least in this area, uh, in 1993. It was the who's who of Gettysburg. Wayne, were you here? What's that? When, when Gettysburg premiered here at uh, the Majestic Theater, now known as the uh, David Levant Performing I, Arts Center. I was not yeah. in where the I was not in the actual premiere, so I wasn't here. Okay, well, I changed my mind. It was not a who's who of Gettysburg because <laughs> Wayne Motz wasn't here. <laughs> it couldn't possibly have been a who's who. Even by that time, I had already known Wayne for three years at that point. So we do go way back indeed. We sure do. Now, yeah. we're walking into the town right now and uh, <laughs> trying to get in here, crossing race. Yeah, we're crossing. Alley. Keep in mind, everybody's walking by yeah. us too. Now, while we're now in. two things going on here is that we're walking over battlefield here on July 1st, 1863. Up come the Confederates here. You've got South Carolinians coming into town, raising the flag over the town square, a cannon booming and firing down the streets, thousands of Union troops crowding through the streets trying to escape. Let's hold on for a second. But what most people don't know is after the Confederates occupy the town for a couple of days, then they eventually pull back their lines over west of here to Seminary Ridge. At that point, the Union comes and occupies the town and establishes a barricade right there before the railroad tracks. We have a July 4th-ish, 1863, I think it's a Forbes or an Alfred Wad uh, drawing showing the barricade right here with the train station in the background. It's really it's cool. It's got so, overturned cars in there. Yeah. Isn't there like a car? Yes, there's like a train there? car overturned. Exactly. Yeah. Now, Wayne, many of you don't know that in a past life, a few jobs ago, Wayne was head of the Adams County Historical Society. So while we have you here, Wayne, and it's not too windy, you know, why should people pay attention to the town? You know, I'm into the battlefield. I'm not into the town, Wayne. Well, one of the reasons why is when President Dwight Eisenhower retired here, 
One of the quotes that he said is history was made on quiet streets. So we always talk about Gettysburg being the center, the storm of the greatest battle of the Civil War. We think it's the greatest battle. We're in the East, so for you Western guys, Sorry. We, <laughs> it's up to us because Chris, Gary, and I are the ones that are here today, and we're allowed to say that. But what we've got to understand is there were 2,400 people here during the time of the battle. There's over 7,000 people here today, and people live and work here in Gettysburg and places like the Adams County Historic Society, they keep that history because there's 200 years of history related to Adams County, actually longer than 200 years, that, and the battle is three days of that, and the campaign is a short part of that too. So there's a lot of history here, needless to say. It sounds like Wayne might have answered that question before. Well, <laughs> yeah. well done, sir. Uh, let me just say I'm seeing a lot of good friends on here right now. Our good friend Rich Condon, who says the weather's a little nicer He's got South Carolina. more warmer weather yeah. than we've got. And, and our good friend and generous trust donor Jamie Ryan says hello. Hello to you, Hi, Wayne, Jamie, as well. Yes. So, so hello to everybody, and thank you for watching. And uh, we hope you'll share this with your friends because we're coming up to the town square. And of course, this is the walk that Lincoln made. We're walking in Lincoln's footsteps, maybe on different bricks, I get it. But here he is walking here on the 18th. This place was pandemonium. I'm gonna ask Wayne in a second to try to paint the picture of what the square would have looked like for Gettysburg's second busiest day up to that point where the president and half of his cabinet and governors and everybody was here, including the greatest speaker in the land, Edward Everett. What, what would this have looked oh, like, Wayne? So they've got, we know from some of the accounts here that every bar and tavern was occupied occupied. All the private homes were occupied. We also know that the Democratic leaders that came here to hear the Gettysburg Address stayed in prominent Democratic homes. We know that the Republican leaders came here and they stayed in prominent uh, Republican homes. Every single room in this town was occupied. We've had estimates of 15 to 20,000 people here for the Gettysburg Address and the town, of course, when it's full, and there are a lot of men that are gone uh, fighting in the Union Army, of course, at 2,400 people, so there's actually less than that. So the town has swelled up and there's not a place in town. There's a lot of carousing at night, of course, all around the square. So this would have been a very loud place. We've got loud today because we've got all this traffic. No, we've also got here. loud today because we've got Wayne and I yeah. in front of the that's camera. That's here. right, that's right. But if you'd have been here on the night of November 18th, you would have hardly got any sleep anywhere in Gettysburg because it was. It took a long time for all of it to die down. No question about it, Gary. Good, good. I, I want to say, Wes Mumper, good to see you in the cemetery as well. And John Tripp, enjoy this video. I don't know if I'm making you another Christmas or birthday video this year. <laughs> no offense, but I'm a busy dude. Come on, Chris. <laughs> You're with the American Battlefield Trust. We are doing Lincoln's Walk. Um, you know, from the train station where we started, and then we're walking over toward one place that was busy during uh, this, like every other building in town, we're talking about the Wills House. We've already talked about David Wills with his, I think, eight months pregnant wife. They are going to host dozens of people in their home, okay? Including the President of the United States, one of the only people to get a room of his own in Gettysburg that night. I think Edward Everett is somebody, it was supposed to share a room with Andrew Curtin, and he locked the door because he was afraid the governor of Pennsylvania would tumble over him in the middle of the night. So Curtin had to sleep in a lobby on a chair, and Edward Everett had his own room. Room, but Lincoln had his own room right in this red brick house. Set it up, Wayne. So when Lincoln arrives here and gets here, he'll be on the second floor. And Chris, let's walk over this way. Sorry, yeah, I got turned toward the camera. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. All right, take a look up toward the second floor windows that are over on the far right of the building because that will be the room assigned to President Lincoln. He will actually have a guard outside his room and we know that once he retires up to the bedroom he will actually ask where William Seward is. William Seward, Secretary of State, travels with him, comes to Gettysburg. William Seward is staying in the building next door. Now that's not the original building over there today but there was a building for the owner of the newspaper right next door and Lincoln actually goes out of his room goes over and confers with William Seward. And we're not really sure what the two talked about, but we know for a fact that William Seward is gonna have a hand in this Gettysburg Address, as he did with a lot of Lincoln speeches. So as Gary said, the president's got a private room, Edward Everett's got a private room, everybody else around here is sharing a room. And we also know that his daughter, Charlotte, we know that, we know that uh, we know that uh, Edward Everett's daughter. I almost forgot it there. Edward Everett's daughter, Charlotte, who's grown, is is having. Uh in a room with some multiple women and they're in a single bed that actually crashes to the ground. 
So that is an interesting story about Usually that. Usually when a bed breaks, things are getting yeah, crazy yeah, in a I different mean, way. And this is Edward Everett, <laughs> one of the most prominent speechmakers in the whole country, and he doesn't have the kind of accommodations he'd be used to here in Gettysburg. No doubt about that. That's cool. I'm yeah. seeing I'm seeing people in town. I just saw Everybody's somebody wearing, wearing, they were wearing a Tim, TV. <laughs> someone was wearing a Tim Smith cool shirt. Right? So Tim is now a, a total star on that. I'll say uh, I, I, there's too many people I recognize here, but we've got Illinois, Northeast Ohio, Southern Illinois. Go Illinois, my home state. We've got England on here. Uh, Peter asked whether Ward Hill, Lehman, or Lamont was actually walking with Lincoln from the train station. I think yes, yes is my understanding. Yes, yes, he's with Lincoln on that train. And we also should mention William Johnson, who's the President Lincoln's valet, and he's probably the only African-American on the train with Abraham Lincoln here at Gettysburg attending to the President. And I like this. I'm glad you told that story about Seward, because I like to picture Lincoln walking down the steps and going out the door and then walking over to Seward's house and then working on the Gettysburg Address. We know he finished writing it here. It wasn't on the back of an envelope on the train. That's all myth. We got lots of good Gettysburg myths here. But it wasn't it when he went to see Seward that he either came back or was there or returning from it that he got the note, and I think from Johnson that gave it to him, that said his son Tad was not as right. sick as they feared he was. That's right. And Gary, we also want to make sure we shout out that this house is limited open right now. They just opened it up basically for the anniversary. It'll be closed down for the winter season, but it's gonna be opened back up again for the spring. It's a National Park Service site. If you've come to Gettysburg and you've not been in this house, shame on you. You need to come and stand where Abraham Lincoln actually wrote the Gettysburg Address. You can go up into the bedroom. You can see the original furniture that was in there. It's a wonderful museum and it's National Park Service. Though. Yeah, and it is something about seeing that furniture, about, about actually standing there and actually reading the words written by who? Tim Smith, our friend Amber Moulton Wiseman and myself. We wrote the script for this place many years ago. So it was, a, it was a great moment of pride. Yes, I did used to write about local stuff. Who knows? Now, I want to say that we've got all, the, all sorts of people. People are beeping at us and honking at us and not in a bad way. We don't <laughs> mind that so much. But now we've got uh, New Brunswick, Canada, Rome, Georgia, Little Rock, Arkansas. I wonder if anybody could beat England, though. I haven't seen Australia or anybody no, here we've yet. Got, so it looks like England may be the furthest right now. So, so we far. Have right now? But, you know, okay. we, we're right. probably going to wrap things up in a minute. If okay. people want us to go longer, you come out here in the cold and do this but Chris isn't even wearing yeah. gloves it is cold out here and these me. guys have been out in the cold all day I've been out in the cold almost all day so yeah it's been a cool cool time so what I would say is there's lots of resources we can learn more about the Gettysburg Address and the fascinating story of how this house became the became FEMA the Red Cross and the CDC all in one house and mainly right. all in David Wills's office and they interpret that really well inside there and interpret the town so if you're in town Come see it while it's open, and if not, come see it at another time while it's open, once the world returns to normal, if it ever does. Wayne, anything else to add? I just want to say on behalf of the Gettysburg Foundation, thank you so much for American Battlefield Trust for having us come out today. And stay tuned at the Lincoln train station. We've teased it a little bit. We'll do some more stuff with you next year, we promise good. You that. guys, our, our good friend Wayne is nothing if not energetic. The Rupp House is suddenly open, focusing That's on right. the children of Gettysburg. Here comes the train station exhibits right. as well. And by the way, two people on. Somebody on the feed already said that you and I clean up nice. Good. So, well, so that's good to know. We all right. That's right. Now. So <laughs> I think with that, Chris, that's anything great. else to add? Chris is good behind the camera. So Wayne Motts, President and CEO of the Gettysburg Foundation, and my old friend, thanks for joining us. Gary, thanks, thanks to Chris. Thanks, Chris. And thank you all for watching. And for all your comments, we'll be back live. I don't know if it'll be any more today, but unconfirmed reports suggest you might see more posts from us. So stick with us today. We'll be certainly in the field tomorrow. And thank you for watching and for supporting Battlefield Preservation and Education. Bye.